Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to look at solely Tech Tree Premium and Global XP ships that you can unlock. I get asked the question all the time, what ship for Global XP? But the reality is there's probably a lot of you out there that want to unlock new ships in the Tech Tree. So we're going to look at the Tech Tree and you're going to get my opinion if it's good or not good. This might trigger some people. You should know. I don't care. If it fits into the meta of this game, then it's good. If it doesn't fit, then it's not good. Doesn't mean you can't have a good game in it. Just means that it's not the most effective ship that really exists. Not that it has to be the pinnacle best of the best, but there's definitely a big difference from ships in the upper echelon to ships kind of in the middle of the pack. Both in numbers, performance, play style, pick your adjective, some ships are absolutely better than others in the tech tree, in the premium store, and in the global XP store. Today, we're going to run through it all, and you're going to get my opinion on what ships are worth your time. Because that's what it all comes down to, is your time. These things take a long time to unlock. So, starting out with the Americans, you really can't go wrong with pretty much anything in the American line. They're pretty much all good. Leading all the way up to the Sumner, they're good. Up to the Buffalo, they're good. Up to the Cleveland, they're good. The battleships going up used to be a lot better than they were. Colorado used to be really good. New Mexico used to be really good. Maine is kind of an oddball. Something happened to New Mexico, Colorado, and Iowa, and they're no longer what they used to be. But Maine is like an extremely watered-down version of Montana being that the heal doesn't even regenerate like 30% of the health that the Montana gets to regenerate. And on top of that, this actually plays against Montana and Yamato and all those other things. So in my opinion, Maine, not good. Iowa can be good if you can get the dispersion under control, but if you're shooting shotguns, Iowa is even not good. Kansas is kind of a hit or miss because Kansas can be very lethal, but is it very good? That one's kind of up in the air depending on your play style, but as far as my play style goes, taking the role of the battleship, Kansas can't play far back and be effective, and it also can't play up close and be all that effective because it doesn't have the armor to play up close, and it's too slow to play far back because you can't go anywhere in the boat. It is it is slow, regardless of what some people say, 25 knots top speed or whatever. Make a turn. You drop to like 17. It's got no horsepower. Would I tell you to not grind these both these lines all the way out? No, I wouldn't say that because they can be fairly good sometimes. But if you look at my ship XP right here, I mean, I quit playing main because it's just, it's just not good. And Kansas, I've only got 117 XP in it. And it, it's because I don't really like the play style whatsoever. Whereas Iowa, you know, I've got 4.7 million in Iowa. I've got 1.1 million in Colorado. And even though I don't want to say this, Carriers, Langley, Ranger, Lexington. Lexington's okay, but it's just really slow. Not the ship, the planes, and it's just not my cup of tea at all. I won't even comment if it's good or not because I sold the damn thing. I used to have Lexington and I sold it. For me, those carriers not worth your time. Now as far as Japan is concerned, moving up the Torp line, because they've got two lines for destroyers, moving up the Torp line, some of the best Torp boats in the game. All the way from Fubuki, Akatsuki, Kangaroo, Yagumo, all very good. From the gunboat side, Minikaze, Hatsuharu, Shiratsu, kind of tough to play, not my cup of tea. Akatsuki, on the other hand, that is a gunboat. I mean, that is a very good gunboat. It's slow, it's cumbersome, but if you get in the right position, you get to fire AP into superstructure. That thing can be really gnarly to play against. It's a little menace. So both, both of those lines there, they pretty much get a thumbs up, especially as you get into the higher end. Now, as far as the Japanese cruisers are concerned, that's a completely different issue. As much as you might like or want to like this line, 
Plain and simple, this line is just not going to be effective in helping you win games, helping your team win games. This line plays at the back of the map in a kiting formation, lobbing 17, 18, 19 kilometers trying to light a fire. That's just not going to help you fight off the DV. There's not a whole lot more I can say about it, but that line gets a thumbs down. Same goes for the battleships. The, this whole battleship line just gets a big thumbs down. Amagi used to be one of the best battleships in the game, but then they nerfed it. And I'm not, I don't even know why they nerfed it, but they nerfed it pretty hard. And everyone that used to play it still talks about that nerf that happened almost two years ago. And how Amagi has just never been the same since. I have Key, which is basically an Amagi, and yeah, if it's anything close to that, then I totally get it, because it's just it's just ineffective. Everything you want to do in it, it's just ineffective. So, the Battleship line, thumbs down for Japan. Now, as far as the carriers are concerned, uh, pretty much the Tier 3 and the Tier 5, pretty, pretty dog water. The Tier 7 is a lot better, being the fact that it, I'm pretty sure it can just print out airplanes. You can shoot down 20 airplanes and the guy's still got full squadrons because it prints airplanes. You can't change out the AA on your boat, but they can manufacture airplanes in under one second. Makes enough sense to me. Moving on to the UK. The destroyer line uh, is, is pretty okay. I wouldn't say that there's all that much wrong with the destroyer line whatsoever, but when you get to the tier 7, when you get to the lightning, that's the bread and butter. That, that is one of the best destroyers in the whole game. Quick popping smoke, 360 turning guns, single fire torps, a long duration hydro, instant smoke consumable. I love the Lightning. I play the Lightning. I, I globaled half of this line just to get up to the Lightning so I could play the Lightning. Everything else I did play here and there. Not my favorite. Nothing overly special. But the Lightning, definitely thumbs up. If you're going to grind a line, that's one to grind. Now, as far as the cruisers go, this is where it kind of gets a little bit dicey. This is where you have the people from the UK going, ah, they're the best cruisers in the game, and then everyone else is going, eh, not really at all. So it really depends on what side of the aisle you're on. Personally, I'm on the side that likes to play with the meta. The Leander, Emerald, Danae, pretty bad. Fiji is where it starts to get a little bit better, but it's still a Fiji. It's got AP only. It's it's not it's not overly great. You can get put in situations where you can do well in it, but if you're put in the average situation, not so much. Edinburgh though has an insane amount of armor on the bow, and Edinburgh can be played up against the cap. You can run a radar. Edinburgh, I wish I had it because I would play it, and I know I would play it often. The penetration from the shells out of Edinburgh is insane. It's basically like a Mino with a ton of armor. A little bit slower firing guns, but just a ton of armor. Plus that radar, that's just something that is worth grinding up to. And Fiji is not that bad, but like I said, it's just not all that great either. Now I won't even touch on this line here, going up to the Albemarle, because it's so heavily contested by people. I personally have not found a single reason why I would ever go up this line. Devonshire, Sh Surrey, Alby. I don't care about them. There's nothing special there. It's not my cup of tea. If you want to go up a line that's like this, heavy cruiser, technically, uh, yeah, there, there's other stuff that you can, you can grind. Now, as far as the battleships go, this is actually one of the only battleship lines that starts out pretty darn solid, and then it gets worse as it goes. And what I mean by that is like, Iron Duke, Queen Elizabeth, both very good for what they are. King George can be very good with you if you spec the right commander on top and you run like this HE build. It can be very, very good. But then when you get to Vanguard, even the diehard people from the UK that will just die on the cross saying how good all the UK ships are, even those people don't stand up for Vanguard because it's just, there's just nothing there. I mean, it's just bad across the board. No matter what commander you spec or how you run it or how you play it, it's just ineffective, inaccurate, and it's a sponge for everything that shoots at you. It's just extremely lackluster. And people call it the buff guard for a reason. 
It's been buffed so many times, we're losing track of how many times it's been buffed, and it's still dog shit. And moving on to the carriers, tier 3, tier 5, forget about them. The tier 7, though, the tier 7 is disgusting. I mean, it is it is broken in the sense that you never want to see a carrier broken. You can't shoot down its planes. It lights fires. It drops torps. It's just an incredible pain in the ass to play against. Its planes are made of, I mean, armor plating. So the guy never really runs out of planes. If you get caught out by yourself and there's an implacable that wants to focus you, you may as well just back out of the lobby because he, he's going to kill you. It's just a matter of time. He's going to harass you. You're not going to shoot down his planes. He's going to ruin your, a your AA every time he drops bombs on you. Nerf implacable today. Start the hashtag. Moving on to the Germans. German destroyer line is pretty much solid the whole way. I mean, I know a lot of people were really disappointed. My DD friends were disappointed at the tier 8. It wasn't stronger. But pretty much everything going up. I mean, right down from, like, the V-25, the murder missile, the, the V-170, the T-22, the Gade, the Mass, the Z-23. I mean, there's you can't go wrong there. As far as playing DDs go, you can't go wrong there. I think it's either Gade or it's Mass when you pick up the Hydro. I can't really remember. I haven't played them in so long. But then from that point, you get that strong German Hydro, and it comes in very clutch. The German Cruiser Line... Nah, there's there is a lot to be desired from the German cruiser line. Now the German cruisers do get quarter pin HE, which is broken. So if you can utilize that quarter pin HE, have your way with everybody. Konisberg used to be very very strong. I think it's been kind of pushed down now that more ships have come out and more people play different stuff. Konisberg's still good. Nuremberg can be good. York used to be the worst cruiser in the game, and then the, the whole shell armor interaction with Turtleback thing happened, and then this thing became good. Because it this thing used to get looked at and devstruck every single time. Anytime a battleship shot at it, it was devstruck. It, it was incredible. People would race to see who could shoot the York first. Hipper was a lot better back in the day. Now, Hipper not that good can be good in odd and in moments but for the most part hipper not that good anymore and then rune i can't even comment on rune because it's too new but rune is kind of set up ass backwards you know it's got all the firepower on the back of the boat and it's got no armor in the front of the boat so it's like you you could literally almost sail rune in reverse and and be okay like if i saw you sailing rune in reverse to, to, to like fight people I'd be like I oddly understand what he's doing because like you have to in and out kite in the reload time it's just not it's not my my cup of tea I thought it would be better than hipper and it's actually it's questionably not majority of the time not my ship this line doesn't get a thumbs up it gets kind of one of the 50 50s now as far as battleships go uh pretty much uh the first line dog shit up to the Byron well, I'd say no, dog shit up to the to the Gneisenau, now, really. Gneisenau, now, one of the most inaccurate ships in the game. Prove me wrong. Like, the most inaccurate. Bad, all the way up to Gneisenau. now. Bismarck becomes good. Bismarck's good. Bismarck has uh, increased AP penetration angles, something that's very rare in the game. But Bismarck has it, and that's one of the reasons Bismarck's so good. If you spec Bismarck with, like, one of the hybrid Halloween commanders that... Like hide, very good, very good. I play it. It's fun. It's accurate. It's good. FDG. I can't comment on it. I didn't like it. Not my cup of tea. This secondary line they brought in. If you like to play secondaries, go go to Walmart and go get a a box of crowns and start drawing on the wall. You know, I, I will never understand the secondary build for the life of me unless it's just for your own entertainment to watch your secondaries fire. Makes no sense to me whatsoever. In terms of battle impact, they cannot do that much. Period. They just can't. 
Maybe you get a lucky single or even a luckier double fire that's a permanent on one battleship, but do you think you're actually going to be lighting multiple fires on multiple ships that are permanent? You're going to have a two, three hundred k game doing it? No. That all comes from main guns. On top of that, this whole line doesn't have very many guns. It's got weird firing angles. Weird turret rotations with the back deck. It's not my thing. I don't care for them. For me, this whole line here, the secondary line, gets a thumbs down. Does not fit in the meta. Now we go to aircraft carriers for the Germans. And this is where this whole thing flips on its head. Because they have the best aircraft carriers in the game. Tier 3, not so much. Tier 5 AP bombs, pretty okay. Not the greatest torps. Tier 7, the Parsifal. Boy. The Parsifal is, is just amazing. I mean, it's so broken. I say it's amazing because I'm not a DD main, so I don't ever play against the Parsifal as a DD. You don't want to be in a number of ships going against the Parsifal, especially a Parsifal that knows how to play. I mean, there's not a whole lot you're going to be able to do. Maybe you shoot down a couple of his planes, but he's going to drop his bombs, get two or three Citadels, going to cancel out your heal and take 15, 20 grand off of you. If you're a DD, he's got those torpedoes that quickly line up, and he's going to just drop you, and hope, hopefully you know how to dodge. But guess what? Parsifal comes in so fast. At almost 200 knots, there's not a whole lot you can do. So Parsifal, stupid good. All right, I won't even comment on this line. The French destroyers, because look, I have no time played in a single French destroyer. Here's what I know about them. They are fast. Great. They have some torps. Great. They have some guns. Great. Do they fit into the meta? Nah, that's where people would probably argue back and forth, and I don't want to argue because I, I don't know. I know they don't get smoke, so if you ever fire your guns, you're spotted. Is it worth grinding the line? That's completely up to you. I have no input on that. As far as the cruisers go, I wish there was more to say, but I almost would tell you that you could go up the cruiser line and stop at Emily Burton. Emile Burton. However you want to say it. Emile Burton. That's kind of where the line kind of gets questionable for me. Because the La, La Glace and then the Algier and Charles Martel, those don't fit in the meta. They don't have armor. They have, they try to utilize speed and the kiting, kind of like the Japanese, and it, they just don't fit into the meta of the game whatsoever. I've seen people do things with Charles Martel that were nice. I really want to like Algier. I get these, like, French-American Alaska vibes from it at Tier 6, but it's just simply not. But the Freint, the, the Duguay... The Emil, all three of those, for what they are, are good. From there up, thumbs down. And everyone knows this line for me. There's only two ships that are even worth playing in this, and that's the Leon, mostly for the memes, and the Richelieu. I hate the Richelieu. Leon can be fun playing with friends. Past that, there's really nothing redeeming here in this line. For me, it would be a skip. I would pass. I wouldn't play it. But, like I said, this is all my opinion. Now, as far as the Russians are concerned, I haven't played the upper tiers, but I, a lot of my friends have, so I've, I've seen them played, and I know a lot about them. So, going from there, they're pretty brutal. As far as a DD guy, I mean, they are they are brutal. Like, once you get past the Minsk and you get up to the Tashkent, it gets a lot better, because then you kind of get the hybrid build. You get Torps and you get guns. Prior to that, it's, it's all a whole gunboat line, which is really brutal when you consider you've got bad concealment, a low hit point pool, and you're expected to go up against destroyers that are going to outspot you, and you're a gunboat, you're supposed to gun them down, but you can't get close enough to them. Really brutal line. Now, I think this, the Udaloy and the Kiev, I think that's a little hybrid kind of mix and match, I'm pretty sure. But I don't really have an opinion on them because I don't really know all that much about them. As far as the cruisers go, cruisers are pretty much all good. All good except for the Riga. Riga's is, Riga is too good. The, the guns have too much penetration, results in a lot of overpins, results in a lot of uh, misses. They're fast shells, just like Stalingrad. Too much pin. They overpin. 
they don't hit correctly. And on top of that, it's a little bit inaccurate. Tallinn, one of the best cruisers at tier six though. So put that into the calculations. Bud Yanni, radar at tier five, that can be very nice. Shores, Chappie, both pretty darn good for what they are. Donskoy, I don't like it. I hate it. So Russian cruisers, eh, kind of yes, kind of 50-50. There's a couple good outliers in there. Overall, I would say maybe okay. Past that, not so much. Russian battleships, exactly what you would think they are. They're tanks. They have a lot of armor. They've got pretty good guns. I mean, they just nerfed Sinop, and now Sinop's not any good to play anymore because they nerfed it so hard. And Vlad's kind of the same way. Vlad used to be really good. Vlad's not that good anymore. They got that limited damage con. That kind of sucks. Uh, Suyez. Suyez is actually okay. Suyez is okay. When played up close. Pass, I think, like 9 or 10 kilometers. They get like an added dispersion perk where it just like bleh, goes everywhere. So you cannot play those at range. They're designed to play up using that armor. Up near a cap. In the, in the enemy's face, and that's how you have to play them. Russian carriers, Ixne, Ufne, whatever, all the way to tier seven. Pobeda, pretty good. Pobeda carries a big uh, yeet factor. I mean, you can definitely yeetus Kalidus. A destroyer. Uh, the torpedoes are almost guaranteed floods, almost guaranteed floods all the time, and the bombs are really almost guaranteed fire. So I mean, they they're Pobeda is good. Italian cruisers, as you can see, I didn't even go down the line because they're just, they're not even that good whatsoever until you get to the Amalfi. And then from the Amalfi, all it is is a quick kiting little HE spammer. And I just don't play like that. I don't like it. It doesn't fit in the meta. So I don't do it. It's not my cup of tea. Thumbs down. Two thumbs down. Now, as far as the Italian battleships go, the Caricciolo is pretty okay. And then the Veneto is pretty okay. All depends on your commanders and how you have the boat set up and how you like to play it. But they were pretty okay. I would give them like a like one of these. Like a, eh. It's like flirting on the line. Like there's better stuff out there, but if you want to diversify a little bit, like you could probably play them and get away with it. So it's kind of up to you. I would say, eh. Obviously Pan-European, the line just came in, so there's nothing really here. Uh, but Pan-European is, is okay. Ostergotland's pretty good. I expect we're going to see a lot more out of this line in the future going forward. Pan-Asian, not really my thing. I don't like deep water torps. I think that's a pretty silly concept. So I just kind of left this line alone. I don't really want to play it or touch it. It's only destroyers and it's deep water torps. Not my thing. The deep water torp thing, I kind of give it a big thumbs down. I think it works on PC because they've got 12 on 12 instead of 9 on 9. So you got a lot more opportunity there. But this game is so condensed and in your face that, I mean, half the, three quarters of the time, you're throwing torpedoes at other destroyers. I feel like PC, maybe you do that a little bit, but not near as much. And therefore, Deepwater Torps might be better, but not on Legends. All right, Premium Store. Wichita, good. Pill, no. Oklahoma, no. Benham, meh. Florida, big thumbs down. Charles Hughes, big thumbs down. Massachusetts, but that's for global. Big thumbs up. Sims, big thumb down. West Virginia, thumbs down. Due to the large caliber gun should be good. Oh, but the boat's stupid inaccurate. This thing, thumbs down. Flint, thumbs up. Flint is good. Arizona, thumbs up. Indy. Eh, Indy used to be really good. Now it's kind of gotten pushed out by some of the other stuff that's in the game. Atlanta, thumbs up. Kid, thumbs up. Boise, thumbs up. Super heel in the Boise, super clutch. Alabama, thumbs up. Japan, Yahagi, thumbs down. Not my cup of tea whatsoever. Whatever this new battleship is they brought in, thumbs down. Ayuga, thumbs up. Double reload booster, super nice, super good, super fun. Suzuya, thumbs up. I actually thoroughly enjoy playing Suzy. I play it on the edge, right on the feathered edge. I play it up close, but it is a fire-breathing dragon. Azuma, 
I don't have it, but I've heard thumbs up from a lot of people out there that have it after they buffed it. Key, thumbs down. I won't even mention that. Mutsu, big thumbs down. Ashitaka, eh, is it worth your money? Thumbs down. Otago, thumbs up. Yubari. The UK, Cossack 38, eh, is it worth your money? Thumbs down. Ark Royal, eh, is it worth your money? Thumbs down. Plymouth, thumbs up. Duke of York, thumbs down. That might be a heavily contested one. It's kind of one of those, eh, but is it worth your money? Thumbs down. Play the King George, Fire HE, same thing. Cheshire, thumbs down. Tiger 59, double thumbs down. London, thumbs down. Monarch, me, maybe. I mean, it's a global ship, so let's give it a thumbs up. Hood, thumbs down. Hood, eh, but is it worth the money? No. Gallant, no. Nelson, yes. Nelson's good. A little weak on the bow armor, but Nelson's good. Exeter, no. Warspite, yes. Warspite's good. Overmatch guns, very good. Moving on to Germany, Graf Zeppelin, one, two, and then three thumbs down. Worst boat in the game. Well, that's arguable, but it's seriously one of the worst boats. Like, I can't believe they released it like that. Z-35, yes, big yes. One of the best destroyers at the tier, Z-35, very, very good. Odin is kind of one of these, right? Kind of one of these. If you missed out on Brandenburg, Odin, good. If you have Brandenburg, Odin, not good. That's pretty much how you classify that. Munchen, nee. Is it worth the money? No. Graf Spey, should be good. Sounds good. Historical, no. Not good. Not in this game. Unless you get it only for playing arena, and even then, have fun. Cause it... The Friedrich, no. Not worth your money. Scharnhorst, everyone loves Scharnhorst. Is it worth your money? That one I'm going to give you a, a yay nay. I'm not going to tell you yes or no. Because that it's not a bad boat. Is it worth the money? I don't know. Because it's, it's a Scharnhorst. It's kind of hit or miss. It's not bad. It's not great. It has its moments, right? Like when your girl puts on like the perfect amount of makeup. It's like, wow, this girl's a 10 all of a sudden. That is Scharnhorst. Sometimes it's a 10, sometimes it's a three. Z39, nee. Don't really know what the difference is from Z39 to Z35. I've got Z35 and it's pretty good. Don't really know what the hell the difference in Z39 is. Why they'd put out two of the exact same ships, I don't know, I don't know what the difference is. Is it worth the money? No, get the Z35. Prince Eugen, it's a global ship, but it has the same thing Hipper has, except it's got a reload booster. Is it worth your 750 global XP? No. T61, yes. Big time yes. T61, very good. French, Bayard, yes. Just came in. It's broken. It'll get nerfed. They all do. Champagne, for global. Not really. Not really. I've had one good game in Champagne. One. Strasbourg, no. Le Terrible, no. Charlemagne, no. I only found one use, one use case for Charlemagne, and that was the arena. Tier 6 arena, all cruisers. Charlemagne was really good for that. Past that, I have not. You don't play that in standard. Gascon, hell no. Donkey, donkey can be good. I want to clarify that. I think that's a yes. Donkey can be good. Uh, DeGrasse, yes. Da, Gamrad. Finally, on to what matters. Kutuzov, yes, for the global. Uh, this hunky dunky thing, yes. Makarov, no, because it's just a Nuremberg that got sold to Russia. Ohotnik, uh, the number two pencil, the meat missile, yeah, it's kind of fun. Give it a thumbs up. But you're likely to pull that from a crate, so just keep that in mind. Krispy Kreme. Eh, it can be good, can be bad. Don't, no one really cares. It's tier 4 and it's global. Molotov should be really good, but it's not worth the money. It should be better than it is. 
If overpins weren't so prolific, Molotov might be damn good. Leningrad, thumbs down. Poltava is good, and but is it worth your money? No. Finally on to Italy. Gorizia? Is it worth your money? No. Especially since sap is broken. I don't even know if they fixed it. I don't I haven't heard that they fixed it, so it's probably still broken. So me. Uh Roma. Roma got better since they put the correct commanders in the game a year after releasing the ship. Uh and they gave it a smoke generator. So Roma for global, it's not costing you any money. I'll give it a thumbs up. But at the same time, Paulo Emilio, aka YOLO Emilio, is for the same cost. That one's a lot of fun. Thumbs up. Lenone, however you say this, thumbs down. Duca, uh, thumbs down. Whole sap conversation again. Julio Cesar, thumbs up. That's not a bad one for tier four for what it is. Abruzzi, same thing again. SAP, thumbs down. Uh, I'll make this one real quick. Pan Asian, thumbs down, thumbs down, thumbs up. Lo Yang is very good, very competitive. The other two, don't even know why you'd spend your money on them. Pan Euro. It's a little different conversation. So thumbs down on the Vibris. Oland, I give it a thumbs up. I enjoyed playing Oland. Orkin, I also give it a thumbs up because it's got that radar. Friesland, Global XP, absolutely thumbs up. Friesland's a, a great little ship. And then uh, Bliswaska. I honestly give Bliswaska a no because it, it just is not good enough for 12,500 doubloons. And bear in mind, when they want you to buy something for 12,500 doubloons, there's a reason this is structured for 11,500, so you're a thousand dubs short. So you gotta come over here and you gotta buy this one for 10. Or you go up and you buy the big one for a buck 50. I guess you could buy this one. So you gotta buy this one for 40, and then you gotta buy this one to put you just over that 12.5 mark, right? So when we talk about buying these premium ships, you're either paying 40 bucks, right? Unless this one's, no. You're, you're either paying $40 for a ship, you're paying $45 for a ship, or you're going for the one that's 17,500, and that's a lot more. And honestly, I mean, you're, you're just better off not, you're better off not to buy those premiums, unless you've got your eyeball on one and you've had it set for a while. I wouldn't encourage anybody to go and then just start buying up. I like that one. I like that one. I like that one. I like that one. Not where we're at right now in, in the, the state of the game. But that's my two cents, and you can do whatever you want with your money. All right, there you have it. I did my little ship review. I went through the tech tree. I went through the store. That's my opinion on those ships. Hope I didn't trigger all of you too badly, but those are my opinions. And I don't care what your opinion is. You're not going to change my opinion. Plain and simple. Thank you all for watching. Hope I helped some of you with the tech tree or with the premium store. Until next time, everybody. Hope you guys have a great day. Peace.